Hello, beloved St. Bart's. I want to wish you a blessed celebration of the ascension of Jesus. Today, throughout the world, Christians are celebrating uh, this moment in the life of Jesus that is filled with significance. And on face value, it might be a little bit of a strange event uh, because what we're commemorating is that 2,000 years ago, Jesus led his disciples to a hill uh, just outside the city, not unlike the hill that you see behind me here, and then ascended into the sky out of their sight. And so tonight what we're going to do is just uh, be uh, talking about what that means for you and for I uh, from the scriptures and in our lives and in the life of the kingdom of God today. So if you would just take a moment of silent prayer with me to prepare our hearts to hear God's word and to hear God's promises for us. Let us pray. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to Luke, the 24th chapter, beginning at the 44th verse. Then Jesus said to the disciples, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations. Beginning from Jerusalem, you are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised. So stay here in the city, until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him, and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, blessing God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So today we remember that Jesus ascended from the earth and back to his Father, which I think, at the very least, is unique uh, in what happened, and maybe at most kind of strange, as I said earlier. And if you look at the details of what happened just at face value, it, it is unusual. Uh, I mean, we have Jesus leading his disciples out to a hilltop. He gives them instructions. He blesses them, and then he floats up into the sky out of their sight. And I have to think that if I was standing on that hilltop with the disciples 2,000 years ago, would have loved Jesus giving me his instructions. Would have definitely loved Jesus giving me his blessing. And when he started floating up off of the earth and kept going and kept going and kept going until we all couldn't see him anymore, I would have at least been shocked, um, maybe confused, a bit bewildered, and just marveling at how strange that was. But yet the scriptures also tell us that the disciples returned back to the temple, worshiping Jesus and rejoicing. So even in the midst of some very strange circumstances, the disciples have cause to worship and have joy. And there's a reason for this. And what I want to suggest to you is that the celebration of the Ascension is just as meaningful for you and I today. It has just as much significance for you and I today as some of the more familiar church celebrations like the celebration of Jesus' birth at Christmas or the celebration of Jesus' resurrection at Easter. And the reason that this celebration in the life of the church is so important uh, is because of two things, uh, power and promise. 
And I think that's why the disciples returned to the temple, worshiping Jesus and rejoicing. Their response to the promise that Jesus gave about power was to be filled with joy and to worship and to give thanks. And so for me, the Feast of the Ascension really focuses in on those two ideas, words, truths, power, and promise. What we see in verse 49 of the Gospel of Luke that we read in chapter 24 is that Jesus says to the disciples, See, I am sending upon you what my Father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. So what's Jesus talking about with this promise and this power? Well, he is reminding them of things that he's been saying to them all throughout his time with them. And especially that comes to a head and a focus in the upper room at the Last Supper the night before he dies. He really starts reminding them of this promise uh, from the Father. And that promise is that because Jesus has to go, has to leave them, the Father is going to send the Holy Spirit to them. And as we've been studying uh, on these weeks since Easter, in our Bible studies, Jesus continues to remind them that he is going to leave, but that he is going to ask the Father to send the Holy Spirit to be among them, and even to live in them, inside of them. And so he's reminding them right before he leaves of that promise, a promise from his Father in heaven. And I would suggest to you, beloved, that a promise from our Father in heaven that is reminded to us by Jesus is the most reliable promise that we can trust in. It's absolutely reliable. So Jesus reminds them that the, pro the Father has promised to send them the Holy Spirit. And this is just a groundbreaking idea, and we've talked about that in our Bible studies a little bit too, uh, a groundbreaking idea for his disciples. Because their understanding of the Holy Spirit up until this moment from what they knew about the Holy Spirit's work in their scriptures, the Old Testament or the Hebrew Bible, was that the Holy Spirit, God himself, would come and he would be present in the burning bush with Moses. Or he would rest upon a prophet like Elijah for a particular time or for a particular ministry. Uh, and then maybe after that time was done, the Holy Spirit would depart from them. Or the Holy Spirit would rest upon a king uh, for a particular season of their ministry, like King David, for example. But then when that season was done, the Holy Spirit would depart from them. And so the Holy Spirit was something that kind of was perceived as being for special people, kings and rulers and prophets and prophetesses uh, so for special people but also not for their entire lives just for a particular moment maybe sometimes that moment could be years uh, but sometimes just for a short season and so the holy spirit was not universal for god's people uh, the holy spirit showed up in a special way for special people at special times. And what Jesus is telling these average, ordinary people, the disciples, people who are things like fishermen and farmers, a tax collector, is that they are going to receive the promise of the Holy Spirit. And in a sense, really be elevated from average to being special in the same way that kings and prophets were, as they had read about their whole lives in the scriptures. And that's one of the reasons that in the New Testament, when Peter is describing who you and I and every baptized Christian who's a member of the church is, he says, you are a royal priest. And so... 
because of that work of the Holy Spirit, we are royalty. And we have a powerful ministry, a priestly ministry, a ministry that allows us to bless in God's name, which is what priesthood is. Uh, but that spirit-led and filled ministry of royal priesthood. And so on that hilltop, Jesus reminds them that there's a promise from the Father. This promise is groundbreaking. It's, it's, it's an entirely new way of thinking. And that entirely new way of thinking is, is that they, even though they've never been kings or prophets up to this moment, they're going to receive the same promise that kings and prophets had received. The Holy Spirit to be with them. And that what the Holy Spirit is going to give them is power. And the way Jesus describes this power to them is that they will be clothed with power. Completely covered with power from God. Power from on high. And this power that they are going to receive, I think makes the promise all the more thrilling. And as we looked at in our scriptures from two weeks ago, uh, Jesus says something that I find really both challenging and encouraging and actually a little thrilling. He says that because he's going to leave, the Father's going to send the Holy Spirit. And you will do the things that I have done in fact, you will do even greater things than I have done. And what we see the disciples doing immediately after Jesus ascends into the sky is just that. In the book of Acts, they immediately begin doing the things that Jesus did and doing even greater things than he did. These average, ordinary people. We see Peter and John doing things like looking someone who is crippled and unable to walk in the eye and saying, I don't have silver or gold to give you, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ, stand up and walk. And this man stands up and walks. That's Peter and John doing the things Jesus did because of the Holy Spirit being in them and clothing them in power. We see the Apostle Paul doing something that Jesus did. We saw weeks ago that Jesus raised his friend Lazarus from the dead. We know that Jesus raised a little girl from the dead. And the Apostle Paul, another ordinary human being, because he was clothed in power from on high, raises a young man from the dead who uh, had fallen out of a window and died. And so we see immediately in the New Testament, after Jesus makes this very promise, his disciples doing the things he did and doing even greater things. And what I want you to hold on to, beloved, is that that promise that Jesus gave to his disciples on that hilltop and that we see them living into immediately following this in the book of Acts is a promise for you and for me that we can do the things that Jesus did because of the Holy Spirit within us. And I'm not suggesting that we will necessarily go out tomorrow and be raising people from the dead or healing people, although I never want to rule out what God can do through us because it's the Holy Spirit doing that work, not necessarily uh, you or I. But what we can know is this, and what we can cling to about the promise from the Father is this, that if we humble ourselves and surrender our will to God's will, and as one of the members of our Bible study said so beautifully, if we're really willing to listen to God's directions and instructions, moment by moment, uh, 
we can see the power of the Holy Spirit at work through us. And maybe it's not something as sensational as the things that we saw in the book of Acts, again, although I never ruled that out. But we might have the power to love our enemies in God's name. We might have the power to trust God with our resources so that we can care for others in God's name and know that if we hold things with an open hand, God will care for us. Uh, we can know that our prayer for those who are discouraged or mourning or who are far from God or who need the reassurance of his love, that when we pray those prayers for others, uh, that God hears them and will answer them. The scriptures tell us that even when we don't know how to pray, the Holy Spirit prays for us and through us uh, like groaning, interceding and praying on our behalf. And what this promise and power uh, reminds me of, beloved, is that there is so much more that we are capable of because of the Holy Spirit. There is so much more that we are capable of in our ability to obey God when we let the Holy Spirit empower us to obey God. There is so much more that we are capable of to see healing come into the world through our lives and hearts and hands when we let the Holy Spirit empower us to love. There is so much more that we are capable of to live a dynamic Christian life a life that looks like the life of Jesus, a life that looks like doing the things that he has done, when we allow ourselves to be and remain clothed in the power of the Holy Spirit. What I want to suggest to you is that uh, our openness to being clothed with the power of the Holy Spirit, it is a choice. You know, it's a continual saying yes to God saying yes to God and no to the things that are not God, uh, to saying yes to God and saying yes to our neighbor, to saying not my will, but your will be done, Father. But in my own experience, th those times in my life when I have been the most humble and surrendered and open to God being at work, I, I have seen the kingdom of God happen. And so I encourage you, beloved, on this day that we commemorate uh, the ascension and in a moment when we feel really powerless in this world, we feel powerless maybe about our financial situation. We feel powerless against the coronavirus. We feel powerless about the circumstances that that has brought with it. Maybe we feel powerless about our health. Um, those things may be true. We may have, not have power over them. But don't forget that Jesus, before he ascended back to his Father, reminds you and me that his Father gave us an absolutely reliable promise that we would have power from God the Holy Spirit living in us and being with us. You have power, beloved. You have a promise from the Father to be clothed in it. And don't forget that promise. Don't let anything forget that promise from your Father in heaven who loves you. That you can be clothed with power from on high, clothed with the power of the Holy Spirit. And so let's pray right now for the Father to show us how to be completely open to his promise and his power. Father in heaven, we thank you that our master and savior Jesus, 2,000 years ago on a hilltop, gave a promise to his disciples and to us that you would send the Holy Spirit not just to be with us, but to live in us. And that if we wait upon you, we will be clothed with your power from on high 
because the Holy Spirit lives in us. Father, help us to get rid of anything about ourselves that might get in the way of that so that we can know the freedom and be completely open to your power working in us and through us so that we can bring your light and life and hope into this world. Amen. Beloved, let me pray a blessing for you as we prepare to uh, adjourn. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain within you always and forever. Amen. You are stronger, you are stronger, sin is broken, you have saved me, it is written, Christ is risen, Jesus, you are Lord.